There she go, the hostess with the most. Is y'all give it up for the one and only Miss Charlie V is in the got dog on building. I've been talking about this girl. Let me tell you, hold on. Okay, okay, okay. First of all, you like. Thank you Brian. for the introduction. You is live, <laughs> Brian, and I am so thankful to have you in this dog on live. So we're gonna start with a little let's break the ice yeah. session. So if you have, if you ever seen any one of my lives, this is what we doing. This is how we do it. Because first of all, my father. Oh no, I never seen any. Well, let me let me break. You can in. hear me, okay? Oh, yeah, yeah I, I can hear you. It's a little lag, but we're gonna get through it. Um, the the first thing I do is called let's break the ice because like mm-hmm. they already follow me, they see what I talk about, they know what I talk about. That's cool. It's about you. I want this to be about you. I want this to be about everything you got going on. We didn't did a deep dive on your page, and you are prolific. Like I love the way you break things down. I love the stuff you talk about. I love like I, I ain't gonna hold up. I'll start talking about some stuff that we got planned. So the first section is called let's break the ice. So. The first three questions. The first question. Give me three things about yourself that you just want everybody to know. Um, I'm 27, by the way. That's that's. Okay. I want people to know that because we are starting to change our generation and generational curses and stuff. And that's why I mentioned that because you know my grandmother died at 52. My mom already had cancer mm-hmm. twice, and it's like Dang. I don't want to be, you know, carrying that on. You know, yeah, and so, you don't have to. We got this. Right, exactly. So I'm 27. I started um, my holistic journey when I was young. So okay. um, a lot younger. So um, there's that. Another thing is um, I'm a hairdresser. So I That's do dope. really care about people and I love to see people smile. Um, mm-hmm. So I care about people. Uh, the last thing is um, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what else I would want people to know about me other than the fact that I'm, I care and that mm-hmm. um, I started this journey long ago. Okay, well, let, let's talk about some dreams. And we were like, what's your, what's your overall dreams and inspirations to like for what you're doing and what you want to get out of life and for people and things of that nature? Um, for f- other folks, um, I want to be able to touch folks. You know, people light up when they see me ultimately and to touch, just touch people in a way that I change their life and way that, you know, I plant a seed and then they'll live the next day and the next day better and better and better. And they'll think back, oh, that one person that helped change um, something about me, you know? You know what I love the fact about like you being a hairdresser and also being like hopping in the holistic world is that Mm -hmm. you are literally like touching people's like cranium. You know what I'm saying? Like you're actually dealing with, so like, I mean, as you already know, like you're responsible for the, the the frequency and the spirit that you carry within yourself and for you to be exactly. so tangible with people, you know, like that's a blessing because if your intentions outside of hairdressing is already like to heal and to do this, that, and the third, you'll be surprised. I'm, I'm pretty sure you already know, but you'll be surprised how many people, well, how, the lives you touch is for, via conversation, you know, like right. helping them like with their, their hair and stuff like that. Like it's, I love when, because a lot of my friends that like do stuff that we do, and they always have some type of job or some type of gift and talent that's for people. You know, like for mm-hmm. me, before I started doing, like really diving into holistic practitioner work, um, personal training, music, you know, traveling and doing stuff like that, consultations. Another one of my friends, she's doing borderline the same thing. Another one of my friends, she's in nursing. You know, so it's like, and everybody's just not really deviating, but having such close parallels to like their talents and like the holistic realm. So I think it's right. really beautiful that you're somebody who does hair and then also does so like you know you're healing people that is so that is so amazing to me bro thank you so our next section is called the more you know there's two p- particular videos that you posted other mm-hmm. than some other stuff we're gonna dive into but these two i, I definitely want to talk i don't know how much you know because I, I saw i saw like a few videos on it but the first one i saw was um dmt now i'm i'm only somewhat <laughs> familiar dmt not from usage not from never practice, tried it myself from, but Okay, see, and that's all about to go into. I was gonna actually like right. you have before because I have friends, very close friends, who mm-hmm. I've watched like do it in front of me, and it's so crazy. Right. It's like he did it, and then like he was on the sofa, like just like it hit him like immediately, mm-hmm. and then like he was out. Kid you not, about a minute and a half, two minutes, and when he came back and he told us like everything that was going on, mm-hmm. we were sitting there talking for hours as as though he wasn't just sitting there for like a minute. You know what I'm saying? Like it's right. crazy. But I want you to dive into some of the um the actual properties and the healing properties and everything you were speaking on. Can you dive a little bit into that? So DMT, you will only experience it once in your life. And that's ultimately when you die. Mm -hmm. That's what they say anyway. Mm -hmm. But we naturally produce this chemical in our brain. 
not just when we die, but we do when we're living in very, very small amounts. So like when we get in a dark place, serotonin, melatonin kicks in, right? We start to get in our sleep stasis and DMT will come when you have a deep sleep and you get a very, very little dose of that. But um, it's supposed to take you, people say that um, they basically have a lucid experience um, right. a spiritual experience like deep within themselves um and it's only like a few people can really access um that in their sleep um but when you do dmt um it does it does definitely take you on that journey and i know a couple people that are close yeah. to me that did it and told me their experience and it's just mm -hmm. wild like it just it doesn't sound like um they're in this realm like they're just somewhere else experiencing life right because the way they know. describe like the things that they see and that i ain't gonna say people but the the other organisms that they see is like well yeah this right. person was shaped like this and i'm sitting there like because I, I i mean I, I also study ironology too so it's mm -hmm. like to me it's as though it's just an extensive dream sometimes mm -hmm. you know right. so our lucid dreams like you said so i think about it from like a more symbolic you know dreams are very subconscious and very symbolic yes. so i always think about it from like that standpoint so when they start describing these figures and these colors and these things and then i was like well what you was feeling whenever you saw this color and then how about this you know because like you'll be surprised how much those those visions and dreams when you dissect it from an ironology standpoint mm -hmm. it transcribes verbatim mm -hmm. you know so like that's the part that kind of blows my mind about it and i just be sitting here like like I'm, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna lie. I'm kind of scared to try. That's why I haven't tried it yet. I'm afraid I'm too, honestly. To but I, I, I mean, I've done. I'm afraid of doing that. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm scared, but I've done shrooms. You know, um, acid. It's not the greatest, but the experience is what I'm searching mm -hmm. for, or was right. searching for, and it was worth it ultimately because it was different, and I learned things about myself. You know, um, it was just it was just a very different experience. And I think everybody should experience hallucinogenics and some, things some like that, especially it, yeah. if they have mental issues, um, schizophrenia mm -hmm. and stuff, because it really helps, especially the magic mushrooms and stuff. Yeah. like Yeah. See, I feel like I'm going to try that next because I don't drink or smoke. Uh, mm -hmm. never, I tried to, I tried drinking a little bit in college. That just was not my thing. You like mm -hmm. the hard stuff, the soft stuff. It just is all nasty to me. I don't like it. But um, oh Lord, one of those must got loose. She got him. Um, but I had tried. Let's see what else I did. One of my friends had tried DMT, and he was like, "You want to try it?" From what I know, I, I think there's tincture forms of it now. But from what I know, is either like, is either like um smoking it or like snorting it, I believe. And yeah. I was like, "That's not really my thing. I don't, I don't really do anything like that." I've but heard I, of the I smoking. Do... Say it again. I've heard of the smoking. Like, yeah, that, that's, and that's the what only... my friend did. And the um, there's there's different ways to get there. Um, for example, there's um, something that they do in the Hispanic cultures when they they eat certain plants, and it gives them those hallucinogenic, almost like DMT experiences. So you can get close to it with more natural stuff versus the chemicals. Um, yeah. But that's my thing. I don't want to do the chemical. You know what I'm saying? Mushrooms, they're, they come from the earth. They're naturally forming things. They're going to form anyway, whether it's out in the wild or if it's in a container, exactly, you know? Exactly. So I would rather go that route versus the chemical. Um, right. But I, I don't like even know exaggerated. what they make it from. So I'm like, thank you. What is it? <laughs> you know, essentially. Like so, they exaggerate so many things when it comes down to the drug world or to like, oh, well, you right. really want to trip, you do it like this. I'm just sitting there like, so, cause like prime example, uh, my great great friend who I work with, she's in here. The one to moderate is Chelsea. We mm -hmm. sit down like she'll present something to me or a product to me, and I will like I don't even care what the front look like. Let me look at the back. You know, it's mm -hmm. like the like, what's the ingredients? This that and the third. Like, how you feel about this? No. How you feel about this? They almost had me, but then I see this and then I see that because like one thing I found out very very recently, just doing more FDA research and diving and stuff like that. But Brother Reza Islam and Yaki Awakening had uh talked about citric acid. So to me, when I think of citric acid, I think about the naturals. I think about like all the fruits that have all that type of stuff. But then come to find out in order for, in order for them to kind of yeah, essentially inject that inside of the uh, the products and stuff like that, it's actually like the like a moldy, like a, a bacterial mold that they kind of put in there. And like it helps like 
uh, with the cellulose and it helps like harden it or, or like compartmentalize it. And I was like, excuse me. And then the more I dove into it, apparently it does like crazy damage to your pancreas. Not immediately, but you know, with everything Over that's time. a slow burn these days. But right. I was looking at it and I couldn't believe it because like it's not even just in that. It's like it's in all types of juices. Is it like they say, well, you got to be careful when they say, oh, from concentrating, blah, 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 blah. When I see that, I immediately go do research. Okay, what you mean from concentrate? Because, right. like, especially like the, um, like the, they say like added, I can't remember, it's like added uh, sugars or some other stuff like that are from the concentrate of such and such fruits. And it's not, it's not essentially from necessarily that fruit. It's like some kind of chemical bound thing that did like prime example for, um, even though we don't drink soda, but like the Fanta, right? They say the mm-hmm. concentrate dye comes from blah, 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 blah. They had a guy had like a sponge or something like that, poured it into a bowl and just stirred it for three minutes and then took the cotton out. Now, the cotton was red, but all of the actual like soda or whatever, it was sitting in the bowl and it still was carbonated and all of that. But like he had, they had did some kind of like experiment on it and it was like, you're drinking dye. You're drinking literal citric bacterial dye. And it blew my mind. I was like, I, I, I mean, like I said, I already don't really drink soda and stuff like that. It's not really my thing. But yeah. whenever just to see that, it's like, dang, that's that's crazy. Crazy. I know that that makes zero sense. And you know what? When I was young, I think I had a like just a knowing because I really never I was always like I was big when I was young. And um like that was from I guess depression and things when I was young, being isolated, mm-hmm. you know, because I was the only girl and all I just had brothers, you know, so I felt always mm. isolated. So I yeah. got big. And um, I remember, like, just so clearly, my brothers would always drink up all the sodas. They would always mm. drink up all the sodas. And then before I knew it, I didn't want soda. I didn't fight for it no more. I didn't, yeah. none of that. And it's, I feel like it's just, it was a knowing of, you know, that it's bad anyway, you know, sugars, whatever, plus the dyes, that's crazy. And it's just like, it's, it's, it wasn't needed, you know, essentially. And I would just At drink all. water. Definitely, most definitely. And like, I don't know, bro. It, it, it just blows my... See, I'm an experimental type of person. So I remember I had went... Cause I, like I said, I'm the same as you. I never really had a desire for it. But my mom, my mom could drink... Well, not anymore. She's off of it now. But like root beer every single day. And oh. I was like, man, let me try this stuff. Like, what you, what this stuff hitting on? And like, you, I would have swore that somebody just poured alcohol down my throat. My eyes got all watered out uncontrollably. I was mm-hmm. like, how y'all enjoy this stuff? She's like, oh, no, it's smooth. I was like, smooth to who? But like, even the seltzer water, because I see people drink a lot of salsa water, and salsa water is essentially the same. Talking about, um, what's the, what's another name for it? What do they call it down here? The, the bubble, I, bubbly water. Yeah, that's the, I forgot the name of it. All of those other brands and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just the water that's carbonated. So Ooh. it's... Since we on it's added, really uh, bad for the too. for the gut, you know. It's really it's 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 really bad for the gut. Since we on uh these topics, you had another video you were talking about. Uh, you say I, I would never try this brand. Let me see if I can say it right. You was like I told myself I'll never uh try these brands again. It was like the Crest Too Faced was like the fluoride. Now me personally, I'm on the same boat with you. It... Ain't no fluoride going <laughs> in my system if I can avoid it. So tell me about your standpoint on fluoride and alternatives. Like so, essentially, why is bad? And the alternative that you use. So, um, when when I was researching, I don't know what how I came across this, but um, apparently the fluoride that is used in America and that is deemed safe for human consumption is a byproduct that comes from China, actually, mm-hmm. that China sells to the United States. And they use it on our food, in our food. They use it in our stuff. Um, Can't say that's the same fluoride that they put in water, but the same fluoride they put in water also does the same exact thing to the human body. So Mm -hmm. fluoride's not good for you. It's not good. It's a toxin. It's a toxin, essentially. And the the crazy part was they had a, um, what it was, it was like a video I saw of an experiment group they had in the UK. And it was like a guy just traveling from like shop to shop. And then he was like, I want to show you guys what you're actually drinking in tap water as opposed to he was like, he was a big advocate for the for distilled water and, and actual like spring water, not like the fake stuff, but the real mm-hmm. spring water. And mm-hmm. he was like, look, this is a, uh, this is a fluoride. And I forgot the other chemical. It's a such and such uh, detector. It's, it's edible. I'm going to put it into these, these two different things. If the water turns yellow, 
it's um it's filled with all these chemicals. If it's not, it's as alkaline as you can possibly get it. So he had mm-hmm. like the distilled water and he had like the fluoride tap water right that most of them were drinking out there. And he was like, I want to show you guys how fast it um he said how fast it actually like sticks inside of your body and it is absorbed or whatever. So when he did it, he was like, I want you to do the same thing I'm doing. It's a clear glass, like the chemical that he what the the identifier that he put in there turned the uh, the water like a yellowish kind of kind of like tannish color or whatever. Mm-hmm. He drunk it, swizzled it around in his mouth, had an empty cut cup and spit it out. But it came back out clear. And the dude was like, why did it come out clear? He was like, that's how fast your body absorbs all of this stuff. And I was sitting there like the act, like the very chemicals that were identified in this water takes if a few seconds to go. Because you got to remember, too. And it makes sense when you think about it, because yep. our salivary glands, our yep. tongue, the, our enzyme producers is like it just as well as it can shoot out stuff to digest. It can ingest, mm-hmm. you know, and people forget, like. They only know one function of the organ or gland, and it's like, well, you know, if it can give, it can receive. You know, like, everything works as a byproduct of something else in the full circle in the body. So when he did that, it made me think back to the other experiments. I forgot to do his name. He's a scientist in Ber- at Berkeley. He's a black guy. He's about in his 50s right now. He got, like, a ponytail, and he was doing, like, the pesticides, herbicides um, uh, experiment about, like, how these type of things that are leaking into our waters. And that's the reason why algaes and sea moss is so prevalent right now in America, even though it, it never was li- like that, but come to find out. And I even know this come to find out sea moss and like algae is actually the purifiers of the water. So essentially it grabs up the toxins and all the pesticides and herbicides that's coming here and there and whatever else pollutants that's inside of the um, prime example. When we, I'm from Louisiana. So when we had that oil spill down here, when you, especially when you look at the swampish areas, like I'm in South, South Louisiana. So like I'm by bayous and stuff like that. So whenever you would, take trips and go look or whatever it was so much algae and it was so much sea moss but apparently that's its job it's to soak all that stuff up eradicate it and reproduce nutrients for the water had no right. idea so whenever the dude was doing like all the experiments of the chemicals that they put in the herbicides what well, the herbicides and pesticides they're putting on like the herbs the fruits and stuff like that uh essentially in california and arizona and i think it's a few more agriculture spots in north the middle north of uh middle northeast of uh america he had like the frogs he was using how it was tearing up the reproductive system and reversing uh, uh it was reversing reproductive uh, genetics and making like the male frogs uh, grow like vaginas and stuff it was crazy and then on top of that it was showing how like the endocrine system was going in there and causing like massive fibroids massive uh wow. PCOS and stuff like that and he's sitting there like yeah and i say now nah. he's like pete this it's the same water they're pumping into the cities i almost threw my phone across the room it made zero sense reasons why i'm such a big advocate of distilled water like, you're like, well, mm-hmm. it's bad for you, and blah, 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 this, that, and the third. I was like, you mix that with some good chlorophyll, you'll they be all right. always say that. You will be all right. But then right. it makes sense why they said it, because me personally, I ain't going to get too deep about it. Don't want to get shadow banned. I feel like it's an agenda. But we ain't going to dive into all of that. We're not going <laughs> to dive into all of that. Not, not, on to, not on today. Okay. So I use um, a shower filter. Um, Which one? Because I know well, I use uh, Nikon brands. That's the one that has like the uh the activated charcoal, the pink Himalayan salt, and like some other stuff in there. Yeah, there's more stuff in there. Yep. Okay. Um, so I have this. I have a shower filter, and then I have um a waterfall filter. So the waterfall filter is for drinking water. Um, and essentially, it's you don't need to plug it in. It's not okay. a power base, so it's a gravity base type of filter, okay. which is what I love about it. Because think about it, if you like let's say the lights go off i'm gonna mm-hmm. still have a way to get me some natural right. stream water you know what i'm saying that's electrolyzed and mineralized and all that just perfectly for me you know so like those those are the things i do for myself um mm-hmm. in my house you know just for every day like to combat that fluoride the right. bleach in the water all of that because my skin used to be so tore up because i didn't have a shower filter you know what i'm saying It'll do it to you. Somebody yep. on my end is asking for the filter name again. What's the what's the filter name again? Can you spell it out for him? Nikken. Um N I K K E N. Just look, I'm about to write it down too. I know which one I won't, but I shoot, I'm about to look at the one you're talking about. I'm gonna check that thing out. Yeah, N I N I K K E N. And it's also I it's also on the link of my bio. So if you want to fast track, you can go to the link of my bio and you'll see the Nikken. Um, it will say probably water treatment because, you know, I'm nice. real big on water treatment. And I also agree about distilled water. Uh, a lot of people are like, oh, no, you shouldn't drink it. It's not good for you. And I'm just like, 
I'm tired of like explaining why yes. <laughs> it's but good you know, for you. Is, like it just goes to show that people don't don't critically think or do research because it's like if you they say oh it's bad and you want to run with it blah 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 but just think about the distillation process. Mm-hmm. If you really sit there and think about the actual distillation process and how they actually capture this water and repurify this water, like you are literally drinking almost the most purest form that you can get. Now, granted, to, in my opinion, the real, like the most ancient, purest water that you can probably get is water from the the uh, from the ice, like way on the other side. You get that and you let that. In my opinion, good. it's from the rain, but we wouldn't be able That's to do it. that nowadays because of all the stuff they spray in the sky. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. But exactly. It, essentially for our ancestors, that was the purest water. Mm-hmm. That's ultimately what nourishes the plants. And I that's like my internal belief. Like if anything all else fails, I would drink the rain water. <laughs> because Honestly. shoot, let the lights go off. I'm a survivor. I want to <laughs> make my own distill uh distill process. I know they have one, but it's electronic. I wanna they're, I wanna get like yeah, the, the boiler. Like the actual too. one that does like the steam and it has the mm-hmm. tube that goes into the next cylinder and then it actually presses it out. Because mm-hmm. rain, sleet, or snow, I could go start a fire. You know what I'm saying? I'm in the south. Right. There's greenery, there's shrubbery. You can start a fire just by snapping mm-hmm. your fingers, honestly. And But then, like, you you know, get some stuff out there, boom, and you have your own canister to where it's like, I don't have to rely on nobody else for it. That's my biggest thing. Whenever I move, I already have, like, my plan for, like, my greenhouse and my garden mm-hmm. and stuff like that. I've been doing crazy amounts of research. Plus, I've been gardening with my grandmother since I was a kid. Granted, she's she don't really do it too much now because she's up there in age and she got other things to do. But, like, you know, and I can't go there every day and really tend to it. But, like, she still tends to her yard as much as she can. And, like, I still, you know, all that stuff is still within me. And I can't wait. I cannot wait until I start my own stuff, bro. Like, mm-hmm. it's just, I'm just so sick and tired of going to grocery stores. I do love yeah. going to the farmer's market. They got a place out here called Fresh Pickings. My God. It's like, it's... Once it a week? A fr- hmm? I live in Florida. I ask you if it's once a week. Well, I live in Florida where there's many of, many farmer's markets all throughout you know, like you could just be going to the Everglades for a trip on, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And you'll see the farmer's markets just lined up, but they're, they're everywhere. And, I love um, it. I love it. Me too. I have a Moringa tree right now. I have a mango tree. Really? I have an avocado tree growing that I grew from a seed. Yes, that's what um, I'm talking Which method did you use? For the seed? I just... Put, yeah, especially I for just, the avocado um, one. I, um, for the avocado, I put these toothpicks in it and then mm-hmm. I sat it in a cup with some water yeah. and it just grew roots and sprouted. I love it. Um, you ever tried the, um, the banana potassium, like the pill, the pill trick, like soaking it in water and then letting it sit and then spraying it or using like that. It, it mm-hmm. makes stuff grow like crazy, oh, crazy. Try that. Cause like we <laughs> have like, she used to have, my grandma used to have like this rose bush. I didn't fell in that thing so many times being clumsy. But like she had this rose bush on the brick side of her house, and like we would just store like the bananas and stuff in like water. We would just let it sit for a little, like a few days, because like you know it's gonna just soak it up all up in there. And then you go back mm-hmm. and you throw it in the in the soil. You don't you can you can water the plant with it, but you know you really put it in the soil and it will sprout like immediately, like almost the same day it would sprout. No matter if it's dark, light outside, that thing gonna get to growing. I don't know what it is about it. I never really mm-hmm. took the time to really research the research. All I know is it's essentially it's the potassium in it that just gives the roots and the life. It's really more so root stimulation. You know, the deeper right. roots go, the stronger the plant, and then the more nourishment it can grow. So the, honestly, the better the, the better the soil, the better the plant. But, you know, it's just one of them them catalysts to where it's like, let's speed up the process. Let's make it even better, you know? Mm-hmm. That's you what I do plant. with my Moringa tree. I just, like, the leaves that maybe already fall in or I'm trying to, like, get it to be like a dwarf tree. So it's, like, like Ooh, smaller... Yeah. Um, so I take the branches from the bottom and then I'll just like lay them on top of the soil. And that actually, Mm -hmm. um, gives nutrients back to the Moringa tree. That makes so much sense. Now that you say, I never thought about it like that, Mm -hmm. but that makes sense though. Pick up the top of your plant, like very, very top and Mm -hmm. send nutrients back down to the roots. That's another. I love the cycle. I just like like, plants are just so, they so, they meant to survive. You know, it's like, if you (laughs) don't survive. Plants gonna be here. Plants right. Don't make no doggone sense. <laughs> All right. So let's before we start getting to these questions, let's go into one of my favorite 
my just all time favorite sections of the show. It's called Product Spotlight because I love giving people their flowers and I love to showcase people and what they have to bring to this planet. And I'm glad you kind of didn't say it because this is my favorite product that I saw in your shop. And I want you to explain it. Let's talk about the blood type diet plan because before you say anything, I I actually kind of tapped into uh as far as that type of way of eating, I guess you can say, like maybe a year or two ago whenever I got I got the book. But like mm-hmm. I never really like ran with it the way you did. So I would love for you to just like give people like the background story of it, what you're doing, how it works, like just really dive into it. And all this could be found in the link in her bio, y'all. Go to her page, click the link in her bio, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So when I first started out researching, like actual research and not just eating healthy and stuff like that, I found that I was like, I want to eat like my ancestors. How did I get here? Yes. How did I get it. here? So I want to eat like my ancestors. How can I do that? What did my ancestors eat? You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. DNA is actually a marker for our foods that we eat. They can mm-hmm. eat either the foods can increase our productivity, our productivity in our mm-hmm. DNA, or it can ultimately hurt our DNA and go against right. the grain. You know what I'm saying? Right. So how would we know that? Well, you have to do a sensitivity test um, to the foods that you may be sensitive to. And the only way to break down um, what people, you know, where you might have been is your blood type, you know, because you yeah. could be you know, a B blood type and you come from like you're, you descend from That's overseas. Me. That's my blood type. I may be positive. Mm-hmm. So your ancestors were more agrarian type of people. And so they ate more of the vegetation and some of the, the, some of the dairy stuffs, but it was never pasteurized and all that. And that's why. And just so y'all know how accurate it. she is. I talked about in the last slide, but y'all probably wasn't mm-hmm. in here. This is how accurate she is. When I trace back my genetics, I'm sub-Saharan. And I am West African mixed with Spanish and Indian. So for all y'all that don't understand what she's saying, she's basically describing all of my lineage right now. But keep going. Yeah. So um, your ancestors most likely ate these foods because they are from these regions of the world. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So O blood types, they they ate meat majority because the, mm-hmm. the caveman discovered meat, the first man, all of this and, and that. And then came the Aguarians where all the meat was gone or they were in the part of the land where there were less meat, they would eat more mm-hmm. of the vegetation, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you develop a sensitivity to either meats or certain type of foods because your ancestors yes. didn't have access to them. Yes, like pork and your body makes me sees it. sick. It makes me so like throw up, mm-hmm. like I would throw up everywhere sick. It's, it's horrible. <laughs> right. Um. So you can trace back basically um, through your blood or you can do a blood sensitivity test to just see what foods you might be sensitive to or the ones to avoid to stay away from. Um, Mm -hmm. And that's another thing that brings me to people and their autoimmune disease, because if you start to eat for your blood type, then you're less likely to um, Mm -hmm. have an issue with the food you're eating and you'll get better healthy ultimately and that's see that's that's another thing too i want to add to that it's like the whole word just the word in general autoimmune the body does not naturally go against itself so what most people think is autoimmune is really the body trying to heal itself you're just not supplying it with what it needs to heal itself so it's going to eradicate or start targeting things that's either infected or the thing that keeps getting the same thing put over and over because like a lot of my clients Mm -hmm. Like, well, I have this and I have lupus and I have blah, 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 blah. And they get on my detox, right? They get on my 10 day right. detox. And then they'll, or they'll like do one of my custom protocols. Oh my God, I feel so much better and blah, 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 blah. Cause you're finally giving yourself the right things. Mm-hmm. So, whenever I'm just so glad that somebody like you was out here preaching this type of stuff because people need to understand what you put in your mouth is exactly other than your genetics that was passed down to you in your endocrine system. The things that you put in your mouth predicate your health, period. Like, and I don't care. a lot Nobody of talks. there's there's a lot of Americans and you and I see them every day like they know something's bad for them and they'll just keep yep. doing it you know like yep. out of the condition of uh, I'm supposed to like this I like this I like the way mm-hmm. it tastes but it's not right. good for me you know right and you know what I you know what I tell people to do because I I get a lot of people that come to me like that I say start a food journal 
And it's mm-hmm. like, oh, well, you want me to blah, blah, blah. No, we're going to start off just for, look, eat how you want it, how you normally eat for like a week. But, but each day, I want you to write when your cravings hit, what exactly you crave, what did you mm-hmm. eat, and how did you feel after you eat it. And right. like, when they start doing that and they start putting two and two together, they're like, oh my God. I was like, you're welcome. Mm-hmm. You're eating out of habit. Not 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 like, I tell people, you got to start eating to uh eating to live rather than living to eat. Right. You got to eat to live a certain type of way. But if you just live to eat, oh, I'm going to tear this up and tear that up and blah, 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 blah. Like for me, I remember I had like, I did like a strong detox. And then mm-hmm. I kind of was like, just like testing the waters because I like to just do stuff like that. I said, I'm going to go get a hot dog. Let me see what it tastes like after the detox. Child, I'm talking about. Hopefully, it was beef. you couldn't you couldn't peel me off the bed. I was not look. Hey, look, I, that's back when I still had a job. Look, I ain't coming in. There's diarrhea everywhere. Like I can't. <laughs> I can't look. Leave me alone. You know, I got like sick. People, don't, people don't get it. Right. I wanted to add to um, something people can do. Something people can look forward to. Um, scientists have found that. If you if you eat within an eight hour period, you're more likely to regulate your blood sugar and everything essentially. So mm-hmm. it's called intermittent fasting. And oh, you're talking um, about that. Okay, I'll about to actually are you talking okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I'm talking about intermittent fasting. So that's ultimately what it comes down to be. Um, because if you think back to where we came from and our ancestors and how they survived, well, food was sparse so of course they only ate within a certain period of time yes and so it makes sense to just eat within an eight hour window versus eating all throughout the day and then people eat at night and then you know things like that it just throws your your body system off you know Mm -hmm. but you know what's crazy is like they call it intermittent fasting but to me i just say follow the body clock because honestly your body does the most detoxification Whenever you wake up up until about like roughly, I want to say 11, 12 o'clock. After mm-hmm. that, it kind of switches modes. It goes kind of more into like, okay, I need nutrients. You know, that's why I try to tell all mm-hmm. my clients is like, when lunchtime comes, should be your biggest meal. Right. Like, get some food around in, like, or get like, put the right things. That's why I like for a lot of my people, I tell them what to flush with, what type of juices to drink, how to drink it with time, how many ounces and stuff like that. So whenever your meal comes throughout the day, because like somebody like me, like you said earlier, you nailed it right on the head. Like I'm a fruits and vegetables type of person, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's like I will, I will literally devour blueberries all day, and I will be fine with that. Like we'll go to the gym, squat almost 700 pounds, and be fine because like the amino acids. That's nothing I want to talk to you about. We're gonna get to that next. But the um the amino acids and everything that I get from the um from the berries and stuff like that, it just fuels me to a whole nother degree. As opposed like years ago when I was trying to do it the wrong way, and I would just scarf down meat and rice and meat and rice and meat. And granted, mm-hmm. I was getting big. But like I was sluggish, I was like like the the smells like I just I uh, I just I just yeah I, I, I can't yeah yeah the meat gives you an odor. But I was vegan once. I was vegan, and who got me on my vegan? <laughs> who who got me on my vegan um uh ten day vegan challenge? Ralph Smart. I used to oh watch God. Ralph Smart every single morning. You was every hooked. yes. <laughs> I was, um, I don't know. That was when I was young, though. So, you know, I went on the, I did the 10 day vegan challenge. I'm like, oh, well, I kind of like how I feel. So I did Mm -hmm. it more and did it more. And then I just, I don't know. I started to feel more tired than, and then after, you know, a couple of years of doing that, I felt tired. Mm -hmm. And I I, I try to tell other people, vegan and plant-based is two totally different things. It's not just because you're vegan don't mean plant-based. But just because, like I'm saying, this is why I bring in blood type into the diet. Oh, yeah. uh, this is why I bring into the blood type because my ancestors, me being an old blood type, my ancestors, they, they ate meat. Mm-hmm. They didn't really eat dairy or grain or none of it. The, they ate meat mm-hmm. and they ate plants and they ate berries. They ate fruits, but they didn't eat all these different types of fruits and vegetables that people overseas might have ate. Like, I'm not supposed to eat avocado, but, like, I love avocado. Yeah. Yeah, I want to eat the avocado. There's certain things I shouldn't eat, like, you know, and and Mm -hmm. I still, you know, do eat them, but all in moderation. And that's what I tell folks. Like, you don't have to eat things, like, up at one time, you know. It's not 
a lot isn't going to do anything. It's it's not good either. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that's why I tell people because I study one of my mentors that I'm studying under right now. Uh, one of my my more recent mentors is uh is, is her name is called Ginger DeClue, and she's real big on like the 90 10 80 20 diet. And because mm-hmm. even like when she's breastfeeding, like she just had she just birthed a child recently, and she was like, you know, she's predominantly like fruit juices and this that and the third. But she was like, y'all fish and blah, 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 blah. And I'm not going to lie. I'm challenged with that ideology because, like, I studied under Dr. Lila Africa, Dr. Melanie Stevens, Dr. Sabi, y- mm-hmm. Yaki Awakening, and now Ginger, and even Dr. Robert Morris. But it's like, and I, I will say there's very, there's a lot of parallel when it comes down to this thing. But at the same time, through me, I guess I'm developing my own ideology because, like, in the, the process of me just, like, dealing with um my own clients, you know, the own, my like, the people that I deal with, like, I have people that have went fruitarian, you know, like plant based and stuff like that. And yeah, they, you know, they reverse their symptoms and stuff like that. But after a while, they regress right back to the meat. Cause like most people, granted, they lose the craving and stuff like that. But a lot of people just, I, and I have to remind that to myself is like, that's why I tell people just take your first step with me. Let's mm-hmm. heal, let's reverse, let's regenerate. And then whatever you do after that, I'm not going to say that's fine, but at least you have a foundation to go back on and reheal yourself with because I can scream on the mountaintop. Y'all should be drinking fruit juice all day. Y'all should be getting full off of fruits and blah, 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 blah. That's, bro, let's be honest. Let's be honest about it. Not everybody going to do that. Not everybody want to do that. And not everybody's built like that. But not everybody, exactly. Not everybody's built that way because they're not genetically built that way. So the DNA is going to make you, but the food's going to break you. You know what I'm saying? So you got to. Oh, my bad. It's the lag that keeps throwing me out. You keep going. Oh, oh. Well, I'm saying you got to um, balance it out, have a balance. And so mm-hmm. when if you are a meat eater, just eat cleaner meats. You know, they're out right. They're more expensive. They're out there. They're out there at least. Mm-hmm. So, like, it's worth it if you want to live this experience and experience life in another way and ultimately function as a Optim- at your optimum peak you know mm-hmm. that's what you got to do i mean especially in these days and ages because everything is poison bro don't even get me started on that that everything like, that <laughs> that's the part that be that be bugging me out because that's it's the like, depressing part <laughs> yeah because like you want to like oh, i want to eat better i want to do better blah 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 and i've come i've come to learn that the more like it's really all about like having a system to where mm-hmm. like because like like i said before i got people that like they do their thing and then they'll come back, they'll, they'll relapse, like I like to say. But even then, it's like they will lose the craving or they'll get the craving back and then they'll deal with it. But then they'll come back to the same method, heal themselves and go back to what they was doing. You know, and it's like it's, sometimes it's genetic tendency and stuff like that, too. I like to tell people because you said it earlier. You was like, we all come from different places. You know, we already know what the original man is and stuff like that. But when you really break down this stuff, like people come, there's cave people. People come from caves. People come from sunlands. People come from like... Like, no matter how you want to put it, oh, the first man was here and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that's cool. But throughout time, people moved around. Evolved. And people, through evolution, they evolved. Exactly, mm-hmm. they evolved. So it's like, as bad as, like, we want to push certain things. And like I, and I will say, I, I do push more fruits than anything. I'm coming to learn and understand that it's like. But, it, but you're more- right. You're not, it's not, you're not entirely wrong. You're right. Everyone mm-hmm. should eat a pound of 20 to 30 different species of vegetation a day. Whether it's mm-hmm. fruits and vegetables, one or the other, you have to right. you have to get that to get the nutrients that your body needs. And right. if you if you don't, then your body's not going to function at its you know best. And that's just I what to it tell is. That to people. And like I, because it was it was very it was so hard for me to like kind of adapt to that mentality. Because not granted, certain principles still stand true to me, but it's like as I'm noticing throughout. Because like. I'm one of those people to where it's like, I believe in amino acids rather than proteins, you know, and mm-hmm. stuff like that, because that's just, that's just, that's what I believe. You know, that's what I studied. Mm-hmm. I can break that down, but I'll be all day talking about that stuff. But at the same time, I've also noticed that like, even though this is the most refortifying and this is the most blah, 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 this, that, and the third, certain people's genetic structures have been conditioned throughout generations for other types of diets, because the mm-hmm. same diet that I'm promoting right now, when I really do my research, it's honestly more so for black people. 
mm-hmm. know, and then when I started looking at like the different, like, cause like now I have to look at different um fractions. And so I was talking about it with my friend Chelsea the other day. Like, uh, there's actually like a certain fraction of like, as opposed to like minerals and vi- minerals and vitamins consumption between black people, white people, Mexican people, all that type of stuff. It's literally broken down into like different fractions because we absorb stuff differently. We expel mm-hmm. stuff differently. You know what I'm saying? Cause like, right. It, it's just, it's just a, it's a, cra- it's a, it's a madness, but there's definitely a method to the madness, you know, mm-hmm. but like, I love conversations like this because I just want to show people that, that there's a lot of good ways to do things. But mm-hmm. ultimately, like I said, let me be your first step. Reasons why I made the seven to 10 day detox. Let me be your first step to clean you out and get you right. All y'all that, that don't know is in the link in my bio. But um, ultimately, but on top of that, form your own lifestyle. That's why I made something that's reusable. I made something that will always work, but you have to find what works for you. Right. You know, like somebody like me, and a lot of people that I deal with, granted, there's, like I said, there's general floors that work, you know, like I'm, I'm going to promote berries until the day I die, especially for young black boys, because the antioxidants, the neurological enhancers, like everything that it does for us, especially the juices for our prostates and stuff like that, like it is optimal. But at the same time, not everybody's built the same, you know what I'm saying? Like, it'll that'll be the thing. But some people still firmly believe in like, okay, my child is still going to eat meat here and there in the third. I don't even do that. So my child's not going to do it. And I can't be mad at it. I can't be upset about that because it's like, at the end of the day, I gave you some foundational information, but how you mold that into your own life. Like I got a client that's 60. She um has, um I keep mixing the words together. She has psoriasis. Yeah, she has psoriasis. I think she has psoriasis. And like, I gave her a method and it's working. She's almost done healing herself. But she, I already know, like she already told me, she said, when I'm done with this detox process that you gave me, I'm going back to eating how I was eating before. I'm just going to add it in certain little aspects here, here and there. And I said, okay, we'll just track your process. She just turned mm-hmm. 60 and is healthy. I've been training her and healing her for like going on a year and a half, I want to say now. Like okay. for a 60 year old, this right. lady is in shape. This lady is healthy. She just has some genetic stuff we got to deal with. And that's nothing mm-hmm. I tell people. It's like, it's not that you're unhealthy. Sometimes you just dealt a bad hand in genetics. It happens. You got all this crossbreeding going on right now these days. And not to say that's a bad thing, but if we're going to do that, at least understand that that comes with certain things we have to clean out our systems. Or to get ready for the, your body is trying to adapt for the next generation or the next type of blood. Or, you know what I'm saying? All this stuff is going to be passed down. So you're going to go through changes, but at the same time, at least at least add it to your life. It doesn't have to be totalitarianism. It doesn't have to be the exact thing that what you got to go, like the Bible, but at least add it to where now your genes are stronger. Now you have something to reverse. Now you have something to heal with. Now you have something to refortify with, you know? And I'm going to stop because I could be rambling about this all day because I, it's, yeah. Because it's, you just got, it's you got true, me thinking, though. Like, you got me thinking about a lot of stuff. Yeah, because you, the foods ultimately feed your DNA. Same. Yeah. And that's where I'm coming from when I when people ask me or, you know, we get to talking about stuff like that. That's where I'm coming from. Your, the food is going to read you. Your DNA is going to read the food. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. And determine whether it's going to help or it's not going to help. And that's Definitely. very important. You know what I'm saying? I love it. I love everything that you're about. I love. Oh, and that's what I want to dive into next, please, because you are so big on gut health, and I love it. Start, yeah. Like, yeah, you got to dive in. Just do you. Just have this your moment. Just do your thing. I love the so, way you talk about it. So my program is um, how to reset your gut. Reset your gut. You know, I posted my shake, this revitalizing shake that I, you know, used to drink or whatever. And I'm like, oh, I put this in there, put this in there. And then, you know, that's why my gut's like this. <laughs> and it is true. You know, it's it's true because I was a big girl growing up. And so when I realized how to get my gut into shape and I stopped, stopped eating dairy and I stopped all that stuff and only drink water, I, I didn't eat a lot of sugar because diabetes run in my family too. And it just, and then Dr. Sibby, the um everything starts in the gut all the disease that starts in the gut and stuff so that really inspired me to come up with a way um that people would be able to follow because it was very very hard for me to stay dedicated and to be motivated to do this and actually stick with it and be consistent you know so i wanted to come up with a um a way that people can reset their gut um because believe it or not we have just as much as just as much DNA in our body as we do in our microbiome for, yep. you know, almost twice as many, it, there's Talk billions, yeah. billions in our microbiome, you know, so we have to take care of that too, because it's ultimately yes. our second yes. brain, which I call somebody the second brain. Gets, 
somebody that gets it. Talk and, about um, it. And a lot of like gut issues stem from mental issues and some mental issues stem from gut issues and vice versa with any health and mental it's all connected. So you can have a mental condition where they say, oh, she's depressed, but really hormones might be out of whack or, you know, something along yes. the lines like, you know, yes. it's happening inside the body. So yes. oh my when God. Dr. Sebi said that so all yes. that all um diseases start in the gut, I took that to heart. So I'm like, oh, yes. I got to take care of my gut. How can I take care of my gut? What is the gut? It's a, it's a microbiome made with all these creatures and it's almost like a rainforest Lip, just inside yeah. of us you know yeah. so um i found out that um not only water is important to hydrate your body but lipids are too and yeah. lipids are basically yeah. oils saturated fats and things like that that yeah. are healthy for the gut to get the callus like the you know what i'm talking about the things that stick to the sides of Mucoid, the gut plaque, parasites yeah, all that yep. exactly they actually live in there um yeah. and the more it stacks up the bigger the belly gets and that's mm -hmm. you know when i tell people there could be from 10 20 to to like 30 pounds of fat in there like i don't know how you get to 600 pound life Thank but you. people that that's Thank happened you. to people here in america and it's, it's all more, it's started more here. Than you think it's, it's it so is. common. It is. But that's the, it's the diet, man. People diets are so trash. Like you hit it right on the head. I've been trying to, bro. I've been preaching this stuff for the longest. I've been trying to tell people: if you want to get your mind together, you got to get your stomach together. And yep. the moment you that and you find your formula and you start diving into this stuff, it gets ten times better. Because like, kind of parallel, not parallel, kind of uh, to to add on to what you were saying earlier, like what people need to realize is visceral fat and subcutaneous fat is real. Mm -hmm. That plays a big part in basically all the toxins in your body. So when you nailed mm -hmm. it, you talk about like microbiome and all the pounds of waste that sit inside your body. Reasons why, another reason why I started my seven to 10 day detox is so people could cleanse themselves out. Because prime example, I had a client that passed the fibro. I had a client that passed the doggone parasite. I had a client that passed like so much mucoid plaque, not realizing that it was like, oh, well, I lost my stomach. And I lost 20 pounds and blah, 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 blah. Yep. Most of y'all is so clogged up with cellular and intestinal waste. It makes no sense. Because mm -hmm. I keep telling them, I'm like, how did all that get up in there? Just because, and, and I love saying this, just because y'all passing stool doesn't mean y'all passing waste. Cellular <laughs> waste is different than stool yeah. that comes out of the body. And there's multiple the ways you thing. can pass waste. You yes. know, everybody thinks it's only one, two ways. And no, there's multiple ways. Oh, um, man. But that happened to me. And I have to refer back to myself when mm -hmm. I talk about all of this health stuff is because if I didn't go through it, I wouldn't know. Thanks. You know what I'm saying? If Thanks. I didn't, if I didn't help my mom, I wouldn't know. If I didn't Thanks. watch her get better, I wouldn't mm -hmm. know. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't know for sure. I wouldn't pass something. But anyways, flaxseed oil helped me get skinny. It yeah, helped it, it, get it all that. Clean you out. You're gonna be cool. <laughs> it's gonna clean you out. Yep. And that's that's what helped me. But not everybody can take flaxseed oil yeah. based on their blood type. You know, some right. people are olive oil people. Some people, right. for some folks. Drinking a, a, a teaspoon, tablespoon of olive oil a day really helps them. You know, mm -hmm. it really helped their stomach, help them lose weight and help them ultimately better absorb their nutrients that they do put in their bodies. So like um, when I do edit your video, mm -hmm. I love to tell people to do a, a detox or a cleanse before they take stuff like that, because you're, you'll be taking it for no reason. Your body's not going to absorb it. It's not going to absorb it everything it might absorb a few things but what is it really going to absorb you know mm -hmm. like you said about the water thing when they put the dirty when he put the dirty water in his mouth and spit it back out his his mouth literally absorbed that and Soaked i wonder why man you are you are breath of fresh air i love whenever i get people on the show and it's like they're saying essentially what i'm saying but from another standpoint Right. And they're also challenging because I, I, I ain't going to say I don't agree 100% with everything you said, but the majority of what you said, definitely so. But I love mm -hmm. it because it makes me go back and do more research. It makes me go right. back and think, and it makes me like, okay, well, why does she feel this way? You know, and then mm -hmm. I choose to do with my ideology what I will with that. But mm -hmm. like, it, it, bro, it's like, talk, it's like talking to a mirror. I love the fact that you understand and, you're, and you have a really, the reason I'm so happy is because you have a really big following. And like, if you're preaching this, 
that because I think about like I don't think about followers and social media the same way people do. Honestly, I wish I, I don't be, either. You know, I don't even I don't, know how I, I got that many. And I'm I but, you know I don't even know how that happened <laughs> from a juice. Yeah, but I mean you. But that's the thing. Your it's your intentions and what you're doing. It's the message behind it. Because mm-hmm. people like us, our intentions aren't for fame and aren't to like, oh, I want to get cloud and all these hundreds of thousands, blah, 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 blah. Right. Like I say, every time on my lives and my videos, it's like, like I feel as though that's a responsibility. The amount, if you can see the amount of emails and consultations we have to go through and everybody inquiring about the detox and stuff like that, like I feel so responsible when I have a consultation with somebody or just them asking me questions in general. <clears throat> and then like, they need, they really need, you know what I'm saying? Like they need me. That's not a fan. That's not somebody who's like, oh, I admire you. It's like, no, I need help. You know, mm-hmm. and we just hit 50,000 on my end. And it's like, I think about each one of those individual souls. And it's like, how may I help you? Because right. I don't want to fail anybody. Like the best of my knowledge, I've been doing this for going on seven, eight years. So it's mm-hmm. like, to the best of my ability, I would give you everything I know. And I'm constantly learning too. You, I mean, you know, you're in, you're in the holistic practitioner uh, field too. There's new holistic information coming yep, daily. Every day. There's always something new coming. You know, the big wave yep. right now is H3O and collagen, uh, the big collagen conspiracy. Blah, 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 yep. all that type of stuff. And I've just been sitting which there like, I think, which I have my opinions about that too. Wait, which one, the collagen or the H3O? Uh, collagen. Please let me hear it because I think we, we might, I feel like we're here. I feel like we're here. So I want to see what you might guys be on the same it. wave. So co- the stomach, believe it or not, our microbiome is made up of mostly collagen. Mm-hmm. And so when is the stomach produced in the um, human embryo when made? I, I really don't know that. I don't know the answer to that. But I know that it's one of the most important parts formed after the heart, you know, other mm-hmm. than the brain itself, the mm-hmm. the intestines, the the um, stomach is formed ultimately. So mm-hmm. it's really, um, once you start to lose collagen in your body, everything goes downhill. And if we Definitely. produce this naturally, why does it go downhill? From the foods we eat, ultimately. So we're not getting enough collagen from the foods we eat. Um, mm-hmm. From one thing or another, them um, remaking plants over in a different way, remaking Bruh, this over. Right? Exactly. <laughs> the, the genetically modified Man. foods and stuff like that. So that's why we don't get as much nutrients from food that we should. And why mm-hmm. I think that collagen and bone broth are essentially one and the same and that they will do the same as repairing the lining of the gut, which is ultimately mm-hmm. made of collagen. Right. And, I, and, and that's I like why I promote is, like you can you can that. get it from a nor a more natural because like what I don't like is like they have all these products that's promoting collagen, blah blah blah. And then you look at it, you look at the ingredients and none of that stuff helps it out. And but you don't even have like to the- like I mean I understand um you don't go you go plant based but bone mm-hmm. broth is extremely beneficial to the yeah. gut. Yeah. No, it, well, I mean, I, I go plant-based, but like, I mean, if we being completely honest, I go plant-based, but I do dabble in 80-20. I'm not going to sit there and act mm-hmm. like I'm the only thing I okay. eat plants and stuff like that. Right. But um, because I, I find that like me alternating from uh plant-based and then 80-20 back and forth is, is honestly the best for me, even though I'm majority plant-based. Like I can go days and days and days and days just mm-hmm. fruits. Like I'm a fruit right. head. I can, I can eat that and drink that all day. But at the same time, it's like going back to the whole collagen thing. I like to, I like for people, if you're watching this live, I just want you to understand something. The, the, we have three kidneys. We have our left adrenal gland on top of our kidney. We have our right adrenal gland on top of our kidney. And then we have our skin. Our skin is technically our third kidney. So if y'all sitting there worried about all these creams and type of stuff like that, it will be better to approach it from an internal way than an external way. Because if your lymphatic system and your filtration system is already off, you put it on your skin, it's not doing anything. All these little masks and stuff they're doing, and then you look at the ingredients and that with the citrus, oh, this, and, I don't, I don't... and then the xanthium, this, and the osmanine, this, and it's like, it's just burning your pores. People do not understand that. It's like, oh, well, I get like this gloss and porcelain, blah, 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 because your pores are hardened with mm-hmm. all the chemicals you're putting on it. Attack it from the inside. I keep people don't, people be thinking I'm crazy when I say this. There's molecular ash, and which is better known as mucoid plaque. Well, one variant of it is mucoid plaque, but there's molecular ash inside of your intestinal system. And if you don't clean that out, that's ultimately what prohibits the collagen formation. Because mm-hmm. collagen is only... And biotin. Produced. That too. 
<laughs> that's, that's another thing. I'm a huge advocate for that. that. It was like my nails growing in this, that, and the third because it's a byproduct because the body doesn't know what to do with the rest of that stuff. So it's mm-hmm. going to send it to the extremities and then it's going to, it's actually trying to get it out. Right. But we don't understand that. We only associate it with, oh, my hair is going and my nails growing faster. That's not necessarily a good thing. It's more mm-hmm. so the quality of like, and that's why I tell people, check your eyes. You know, like when you start to worry about collagen, biotin, all the type of that, check your pancreas, check your liver. Check your adrenal glands and, tra- and check your kidneys. If you're not filtrating properly, that's the reason why. So find a way to get that stuff back online or regenerate it and you'll be good. Reasons why I can't, and I, and I know I sound like a, I'm beating a dead horse, but I just keep trying to tell people, get my seven to 10 day detox, bro. Like it's a lot deeper. Cause like, yeah, we use it for weight challenge and blah, 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 blah. But it's really like a cellular reset. Kind of like you said, reset in the gut. And right. I keep trying to tell people, it's like, just hit the reset button, please. Just like when your Nintendo not working or when your phone not working, this and the third, y'all cut it off, y'all cut it back on, y'all reset it. It's essentially the same thing. Let us be your first step. Get at least some of that stuff out of there. So whenever you try to tackle this, because like, that's another thing too, like you said, when you detox first and then you take that stuff, you'll see how it really feels. You see what it's really doing. Most people don't feel really these type of things because they're clogged up. So when you actually yeah. detox, you get it out your system and then you start Pretty putting screens on your face. Like I had a client, she detox, right? Skin was popping. Her, uh, she got off of diabetes. She did the detox and everything. She was good. And then, like, I, it was some, I forgot what it was, something she put on her face, like, before she get in the shower. She said it never burned that bad in her life. She's like, it burned my face. Flared. I was like, because your lymphatic system is open. When you're putting it on your face, it's actually going in. your Like, it's actually going in. Because people fail to realize, if it can go through your skin, it's going directly to your blood. We only have so many layers and so many things holding our skin back before it gets to our veins and our system. And the blood is throughout the entire body. The lymphatic system and nose is throughout the entire body. So if you're sitting there playing with this stuff, especially after a detox, and you're like, oh, wow, this is blah, 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 because you didn't clean yourself out. But people, right. don't, they, don't, they don't listen. Oh, I love, I love this conversation. I love it, bro. I can finally say what I want to say. It's like you they don't it. believe because, I guess, uh, a scientist or a doctor didn't say it or they don't right. promote it or support it. Therefore, it's not true, and that's not... That's not how facts work. Like I said last week, doctors, I even, prime example, I did a live last week and I had three actual people in the medical field because my statement was doctors don't actually cure anything. They just, quote unquote, alleviate symptoms. Right. And then I was explaining like how to fix this and how, to, you know, I broke it down. And the three doctors that was doing medicine for over 10 plus years, they're like, yeah, he's right. We don't fix nothing. We just alleviate. And then half stuff we're doing is actually tearing y'all down. It makes it worse. Like, they actually admit that in this live. But then, they're, but then they're also people that's trying to, like, help people more holistically, you know, in their practice. I mean, at the end of the day, I don't blame them for not leaving their practice. You, the average doctor makes well over $100,000 a year. I understand mm-hmm. it. We're in, a, we're in a capitalist type of, of nation. I understand that. But at the same time, I, I, I can commend them for trying to at least add holistic stuff into their patients and, and deter them to certain other ways, which is going to make a big change. But at the end of the day, you know. To me, it's like I don't all that Western medicine stuff. That's for the birds. Y'all can have that. Yeah, I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't want to get involved in none of that either. But I'd rather do the natural way. That makes it. But I sense. totally agree about the lymphatic system. Um, and there's ways you can detox the lymphatic system if there is blockage and it needs drainage because ultimately, um, people that have are heavier have heavier weights and they have diabetes. They need that drainage of their lymphatic system, and Definitely. it's really hard to do, you know, when you're when you're like that. Especially if you're an older person, and you got to get your everything rubbed, rubbed, rubbed. So, so they're rubbing all the water out, and yeah. it's just a lot, you know. When you can just use your shower, and it's it's very Honestly, simple, you know, like very these- simple. Where is it at? It's not in here. God, dog, it is in the other room. I'm going to have to put it on my Amazon link, too. I just got this massager not too long ago. It's like one of those strap ones. And, like, mm-hmm. it needs inside of your body. You can strap it wherever you're at on your body. And, like, it it will pump, man, look. It will it will help. <laughs> it will help you out big time. You're going to have to pee. It's going to push all that stuff out. But, essentially, if you don't have that, the foam roller and the uh and the dry brushing, the stuff that I, that I ultimately use, too. I have that in the link in my bio as well. Like, that's another thing, too. If y'all dry brushing, do not dry brush towards your heart. I keep having to tell that to people. Stop dry. If, if the whole point of dry brushing is to move lymphatic waste and stagnated waste, and we want to get it out of the body, why would you pass it through a valve that's in charge of the distribution of your blood and the quality of your blood? Brush it to your kidneys. 
please brush it to your lower extremity so you can get that out. So be like, yeah, the doctor told me to brush it towards your heart. You're going to have a heart attack. Stop playing around with that. You will have a heart attack. She said, use your shower. How? She has a filtration system. It's called um her brand. Well, the brand is no, called. I, she's she's asking how how do you uh, detox your lymphatic system in the shower? Oh, that's what she meant. So, yeah. Yeah. Essentially, you would just be switching the water from hot to cold, but you have to um, be sure that your body actually gets used to the warm water. And then you mm -hmm. switch to the cold water. Make sure you get used to the cold water. So you'll be in there. You'll be doing this for like three minutes, yeah. um, switching it back and forth. And that essentially uh, detoxes your lymphatic system. Mm -hmm. It's the squeezing of the nose and the vessels because essentially you're dilating and constricting, dilating, yes. constricting. Another way you exactly. can do it, I use a sauna box. I use get in my sauna box for like 20 to 30 minutes and it pushes. It Like I, I detoxed mm -hmm. so hard one day, like I was uh, kind of sick. And then, like, the literal black, like, the like not the mucoid black, but, like, the toxin that was inside of it, like, the little whatever that was that came out. And it didn't have a smell of anything. It was just, like, blackish. And, like, oh. I felt so much better. Like, but mm -hmm. I I don't know what I, I got sick. I forgot how I even got sick. It wasn't from nobody. I think it's, like, I might have ate something. I don't remember. What it was. I was back and forth from my mom's house a lot, and they're not half as healthy as we are. But, like, I think I might have just, like, was just snacking on something, not even realizing. And then my gut was, like, we got to get this out of here. So I always resort to my sauna box for almost everything. And then Jesus, oh my God, at that point, it was just getting everything out. But then whenever I, you know, I got out and I let all of everything come out, I was like, I feel like I'm 12 years old again. Like it feels so good. Right. It's refreshing. <laughs> Somebody just said, I always thought that how is brushing toxins towards my heart healthy? I knew that was bull. Yeah. You gotta, yeah, I'm glad you're thinking for yourself because most people don't, most people do not. But if y'all want to, um, if you're okay with it, um, you want to do a Q&A real quick before we wrap things up? Sure. Okay, so any questions y'all got? And I can't see what's on your end, so whatever questions you yeah, got. Yeah, nobody's really been um, asking questions, just saying hi. <laughs> Someone drinks uh, glacier water in Alaska. Oh, how was that? Oh, my God. that's, that's I know, right? It, that just got to hit different. It just got to taste different. Mm -hmm. I've always have been so picky about how water tastes. Right. Hey, have I you don't... seen the movie Waterboy before? No, Waterboy? Yeah, with Adam Sandler. I don't think so. Maybe I have. It's a comedy. Man, he has, yeah, he had like this little, um, it was like glacier water inside of his, uh, his little light bulb or something he used to carry around his necklace. And he had got hurt or something. They gave it to him. He popped mm -hmm. up and he was like, "Oh, that's some high quality H two O." But like, just the thought of it, I was like, "Man, what if it actually has those? Pro you know what I'm saying? Like those type of right. properties inside of it." I just, I am feeling like my dad. Out of all of us, my dad was the close. He actually went. He used to work in Alaska, and mm -hmm. he was the he was the closest one to that type of water. But he was like, "It was so cold out there." He's from Louisiana, so he was like, I was trying to do with all the people walking in the snow. He's like, "Everywhere you look, it's snow. It's water and it's cold." He said, "I did my work and I went back inside." <laughs> Say hello guys. I miss damn near the whole live. How can I rewatch this? Um, I, I think we could save it and repost it. I, I don't know if we can on here. That's a Chelsea question. Someone said, um, when we were talking about DMT, they said, I thought you drink it like a tea or something. She said the what? Oh, DMT. Oh Lord, drinking DMT. She said drink it. But I the only time I've drank anything was with uh shrooms mm -hmm. and with some lion mane tincture and um some hibiscus tea. Woo. I don't know, man. Look. He already any tincture hits me fast, so I can only imagine. I probably <laughs> well, the lion's mane is just out. so your brain functions at a higher capacity when you do ingest the mushrooms. I guess mm -hmm. it was it was a nice experience, though. Jesus, they say so. Toxins is that make us sluggish? What was you talking about? Um, toxins in the body. Um, I I guess how um certain conditions affect us and it's actually like toxins in the body to make us sluggish essentially i mean you could you can answer i can answer this however you want to go with it okay oh you want me to answer it oh no good question that was that's what they had said right it was a question about toxins and something like that about why no no that she was just i guess like adding in on the conversation i'm reading oh okay okay it sounds what's like the best question. bone broth well all oh, these has question. this bone broth you can make your own bone broth. That's my suggestion. You always make your own. But if you can't, like some people just can't, buy it Buy it from the most, 
just look at the ingredients people if that thing don't say just water first don't buy it because there's so many there's so many chemicals that they rename and be putting in stuff if it doesn't have three four chemicals in it don't buy it don't buy it and you know what's crazy i found out they they changed the names only because they keep losing lawsuits like the right. people deem that it's illegal and blah 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 and toxic and the tips of the scale. It's like, all right, cool, rename it. And it'd be the same stuff because they know they have to go through the same process. It's so it's so twisted, man. It's so twisted. Someone asked me, um, what do you mean or detox? I wonder what they're referring to. Like somebody I said earlier. I don't know. She just said or detox. She might have been uh, saying something whenever we were talking about a particular subject. Some people just be adding on to the conversation sometimes. Oh, she said, what should I buy to fast? It depends on the type of fast that you're doing. Yeah, it depends on the type of fast you're doing. Um, what should I take to detox? Still water. That's the <laughs> first thing. And then anything after that needs to be um, vegetables and fruits and stuff. Because right. that's a real detox. To... You, you're you're starving yourself of all the things your body's used to having, and right. you're regenerating your body to do what it's supposed to do. And so it's going right. to cleanse itself. It just needs a, a push. Definitely, I have a seven and ten day detox in my bio. So y'all can mm-hmm. go to coachbrian.com. Go hop on that. Yeah. Designed strictly for people like y'all. <laughs> and of course, I have tinctures to revitalize. Um, after I'm gonna give you some too. I'm yeah. Um, we have someone who says, My kidneys are in need. I have chronic psoriasis. Oh, I definitely could help with that. But if you got something, you could leave with it. But I definitely got something. Go for ahead. That. Okay, chronic so I would psoriasis. say this anytime, anytime the kidneys are needing are, are in need of filtration, right? So you would think to target the kidneys, right? And we'll, you do eventually get to that, but it's really the adrenals because the adrenals are shooting any type of restorative uh, or detoxification signals to your pituitary gland and to your, thyro- or your thyroid gland. So, and they're sister glands. So one's in charge of the hormonal balance, the other in charge of the uh, reproductive balance. So with that being said, they all, they all, <clears throat> how can I say this? They all somewhat still are in charge of the lymphatic system. So, if you're having, if you like certain people like need to be on dialysis, this, that, and the third. So essentially your body is trying to tell you that I cannot diffuse properly. I cannot absorb properly. And I am deficient of something. So what I will say is you definitely should do, I have a raw food protocol in the link in my bio. You should definitely try that. Or if not, you just need to get on one of my detoxes because all of that stuff is strictly designed to strip. Because what's happening is either it's a blockage or it's a deficiency, like I said, but you need to be on a restorative type of system, something that's going to flood all the minerals back inside your system because anytime the, say like whenever you have, oh, the doctor say, oh, well, your kidneys are this gland or blah, 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 a certain is off. It's always something else that's in conjunction to it that's like, kind of like putting the key inside the, uh, the car. It's like, it want to start, you know, the, we think the battery is the problem, but it's really the, you know, it's really your cables. It's really your power blockage. cell. It's really the, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, you that just need blockage. to clean your system out. That's all it is. Don't panic now. Because a lot of people be losing hope behind this stuff. Don't lose hope and don't panic. There's always a fix for something. I don't care what it is. And um, my advice to you is that everything starts in the gut. So as soon as you um, do a proper cleanse, um, you would definitely be well on your way um, to recovering. Definitely. Ultimately, your body um, regenerating. Thank you for the gifts. (laughs) I'm still getting used to that. People be sending like roses and stuff, and I don't be knowing what that uh-huh. is. They have to explain it to me like yeah. three times. I'll be like, oh. <laughs> so sweet. Somebody said, what do you think about key You're lines? You're welcome. Key lines? Oh. Mm-hmm. Buy them. If you can buy them, buy them. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Put them in your water. Put them in your food. Yeah. You better clean especially your meat the with it. Like, especially, especially in the morning. In the morning. Yep. Mm-hmm. Key lines, key lines are, 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 are the anyway. best. See, what can I do for endometriosis and lymphedema? I can I have an answer for that, but I want you to answer it first. For what? Uh endometriosis and lymphedema. Endometriosis, um most of reproduction stuff stems from um women who have high testosterone levels. 
Um, yep. And of course, some type of mental disorder um, that can always disturb what's down there too. Mm -hmm. um, so my advice for that is it's more spiritual of taking more care of yourself and um, to ultimately detox too. Um, yep. But yep. I don't, I don't think um, of any specific like things that you should do, but definitely detox and definitely try to be more happy. Seriously, because I struggle with that too. And I revitalized after my detox with uh, ashwagandha and that helped me tremendously. Bro, they, that started a war in my comment what? section. I, I was talking about ashwagandha like a few days ago in a literal war, a comment war. That's, broke because, out it, that's because it has adverse reactions for some people. Mm -hmm. So people who have anxiety and stuff, it helps them. But people who don't have anxiety, it may make you a little anxious. High. Yeah. Right. You know, so um, that's the whole beef behind it is that it's not for everybody and neither is anything for everybody. That's why you have to distinguish what is for your DNA. Right. Uh, you know, that's that's where you should always start. I'm trying to find any more questions. Somebody said that in Canada. Jesus, I know it's cold out there. Jesus Christ. So you need to cleanse your guts. Um, you can what was, hit what up was the Brian question? for a detox. She Wait, says she really question? need a, a cleanse for her gut. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, and so um, when people say you really need a cleanse for the gut, I just straight, like, fasting is, is the best and ultimate way to get there. And drinking distilled water and revitalizing with the proper nutrients. Um, so you would go on this vegan challenge, 10 days, I was 10 to 14 days. And then, um, you would fast with either juices or, um, you know, vegetables, stuff like that. I would say juices. You'll hit it way juices. faster with juices. Yeah. But you can juice the, the, um, vegetables nowadays. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's. I found a lady that did, um, so people that don't have juices. She blended it, like she blended all of her uh, vegetables and stuff like that. And then she used not a not a cheesecloth, but a, a, a nut milk sack. How they squeeze it out and stuff like that. She had dumped yeah. it in there and she had drenched it. It was so cool. And like none of the That's actual like, chunky it. parts came through. I was like, man, I'm going to try that. I'm, That's how I used to. <laughs> That's how I used to basically juice all of my stuff. And I, I did it in a few of my videos, but I did it with like a strainer. And then mm -hmm. um, other times I've used the cloth too. Um, another one, I have a last question here. What's the best way to find out what's for your body? Uh, your blood, your DNA is going to speak for itself. Your blood's going to tell you what you're sensitive to eating and, you know. Definitely. So, yeah. Somebody on my end said, what do y'all think about the machine water cleaning out the bowels? I don't know. The, that's called a colonic. I cannot wait until I'm able to do one. We like the people that that do it out here. They um they closed down due to COVID and stuff like that. So the the moment I tried to schedule it, I couldn't. But now, granted, it's not something y'all should rely on. Please do not rely on that to clean out y'all system. But I do want to. I ain't gonna. Lie, I do want to try it. I do want to. I do want to see how like it irrigates and how it goes in there and how it feels and stuff like that. But like I've done a lot of research on it. I've seen a lot of herbalists actually like recommended and do it. And then like okay. the stuff that comes out is crazy. It's real crazy. Like people was you could have seen like actual you know it goes in there and it pressurizes and it expands the intestinal wall. So a lot of mm -hmm. people like that sitting on there and the parasites they unplug and like they basically flow it out because I mean the water's gonna expel it. I saw a lady. It made no sense. It was like you could have seen the parasite on like the piece of fecal matter, but then it was like. I can't even make this up. How big? It was about like, it was like half the size of this, like a like a mm. like some fecal matter that's just been sitting, like some mucoid plaque that's been sitting in there. I was like, what is going? Like, what were you eating? What was just sitting in there that dog going long? It it made zero sense. But I know for me, oh yeah, and I I don't think I have a lot. I didn't clean up myself so many times. I doubt I have anything in there, but I still want to do it just to kind of <laughs> get like, just get, like get, you know, yeah, just to do it. I'm a, I'm right. that type of person. I want to try it. You know, not everything, but I want to try it. I'm good. <laughs> she said, "I ain't doing that. Ain't for me." <laughs> oh my goodness! So mm. The best to do the colonic before the detox. Um, I would say do the detox, then do the, then do the colonic, because you'll see how much you actually got out before the colonic does the rest. 
because if you do the colon and you do a detox, I'm not gonna say it is it's reverse, but at the same time, it's like you cleaned out a lot of the physical part, but then the detox, you know, it comes in and it, and it gives you nutrients and vitamins and stuff like that, and it cleans out a little bit more on the cellular level. But I would rather you clean out on the cellular level first because your lymphatic system just dumps into your stomach anyway. You do the colonic, all the rest that didn't come out, boom, it comes out like that. The reasons why enemas are like ideal. I tell that to people too. Do some enemas. Now I don't do the I'm not even gonna go into all of that. Just make sure y'all do your research. <laughs> like don't just be, oh, it's enema, I'm putting my body. No certain chemicals. And never just not- try because there's a lot of people that make videos on TikTok. Don't just try everything. Yeah, don't just take it with a grain of salt what we say do your research you know how do you think we got here and know what we know because we educate ourselves about it you know what i'm saying and another thing about detoxing before you know to close the out you know the whole session is um you got to be willing to be full spectrum with um your detoxing with cleansing yourself um and full spectrum means not it's not just the physical it's your mental, it's yes. your spirituality, yes. it's your surroundings. It's if you isolate yourself, you can be putting yourself in harm's way even then because your immune system is constantly on autopilot. Yes. It never Talk gets a rest. So Talk about it. Yeah. So you got to surround yourself with good people, people you love, people who you who lights up you, who your eyes light up for who their eyes light up for you. Don't be around people who are going to suck up your energy and then you're depleted of energy and exhausted at the end of the day because ultimately that's that's going to affect your gut too and affect yep. your overall health. Um, and she owned it, y'all. Out, I ain't got nothing it, to say after that. She owned that's, it. That's all I got to say. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But th- So thank you. So I know you see you want to close out. Thank, thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Time is something we cannot thank get back. you. It's you an got, honor. You're going to make me just go and just scream about you for the rest of the week. Like, I <laughs> love stuff like this. And if y'all want to go back and watch this live, we're going to save it and we're going to put it on my YouTube. So check the link in my bio. You'll be able to go check it out and stuff like that. Check out her site, link in her bio. She has tinctures, she has meal plans, you name it, she got mm-hmm. it. Check out the link in my bio. I have detoxes, I have products, I have herbs, everything. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Thank y'all for Thank another you. episode of Live with Brian. And we are featuring one of the best on the TikTok planet, y'all. Y'all give it up for my lady. Y'all give it up for Miss Charlie. You. Y'all give it up for, like, oh, my God, you you did such an amazing job. And you, st- you showed so much information and another perspective. I appreciate you so much. Thank you mm-hmm. so much. What we share is is you know is is food for everybody. You gotta definitely you gotta eat to teach. You know what I'm saying? You Honestly, gotta, yes. Gotta learn to teach too, and um, passing things on is what we've done for years and generations, and I'll yep. continue doing that. Yep, man. Thank you so much. You have a good one, and please you take too. get some rest. You deserve it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> good night.